Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. Through peer review scientific journals censor the material they publish. Manuscripts from scientists are submitted to the editors, then the editors give those manuscripts to a few other scientists that are familiar with the field for review. These scientists are also anonymous, so you will never know who the people are that disagree with your findings or research. This scientist may not suggest publication, they may suggest modification or publication in another journal though. This is to keep the journals free of undesired publications of manuscripts pertaining to pseudoscience and unscientific material in general. It is also said that it helps to reduce errors in the papers and generally improve the quality of its material. Some new research is being blocked though too, because of this process. Specifically from problems of a groupthink, communities set up since the 1970s as a community that gives up their personal values, beliefs, attitudes and so forth, for the sake of the whole. During the times of a gentleman scientist, it wasn't like this, funding had far fewer constraints than now, but they also had fewer publications. The constraints also indirectly require scientific methods, making any work that violates them hard to publish or get funding for. Submitted papers require conformity to proper scientific practices, and if not the journal uses peer review as a constraint to refuse publication of the work. Originality, importance, and interests seem more important according to science as well. Pathological science, Nobel winner Irving Laureate was a chemist who coined the term pathological science, back in the 1950s just before his death. Oddly enough, though he was a Nobel Peace Prize winner, this term was not well accepted among the scientific community. Describing in a presentation typical cases involving observations of barely detected causal agents near the threshold of awareness concerning the senses. Nevertheless they were detected, and with great accuracy. Many supporters of the theory have used ad hoc hypothesis to explain their theories, which involves pseudoscience and particularly ESP. These theories of course can be reproduced by the supporters, but not by critics opposed to the hypothesis. It was claimed that these were not cases with dishonesty, but people who were mistaken about what human beings could do to themselves to be led astray because of subjective effects, wishful thinking, and threshold interactions. To be clear though, this doesn't persuade scientists to avoid subjects concerning prions, facilitated communications, cold fusion, or one and zero point energy. No just use caution, be tentative, and understand the history of science, and be aware of the tendencies of humans' nature which can lead any easily astray. It is stated that sometimes scientists are led astray, and make systematic errors during experimentation, by veering off unconsciously from scientific method. For various reasons and sometimes in rare cases researchers deliberately report false results. Scientific Procedure it is common for another scientist to attempt to duplicate the experiments, to duplicate the results, and validate the hypothesis. Government-funded agencies and scientific journals usually require that researchers archive their scientific data, entailing detailed experimental procedures, raw data, statistical analysis, and source code. This is to provide evidence of the effectiveness and integrity of the procedure, assist in reproduction, and assist in new experiments for the hypothesis. Not mention helping engineers in examining the potential applications for a new discovery. When additional information is needed prior to reproduction, the author of the study is required to provide it promptly. If the author refuses to share data, then appeals can be made to either the editors of the scientific journal that published the study or the institute that funded it. If some irrelevant feature of the study is questioned, this could cause unavoidable problems also. Seeing that all data cannot be recorded on what took place in an experiment, and only relevant facts are reported. 
Observations are hence, sometimes referred to as a theoreladen, because of small deviations of the result. Due to things such as not saying how big the room was, that the experiment was done in. Parts of the theory then need to be assumed in order to select and report experimental conditions. Nor would Russell Hansen, Imre Lakatos, and Thomas Kuhn have all done extensive work on the theoreladen character of observation. In 1958 Hansen coined the term, claiming that all observation is dependent on the framework and conceptualization of the observer. Preconceptions can affect both observation and description. For example watching the sunrise two people can see different sunrises, though it's the same psychological phenomena, parallax. Kuhn stated, the route from theory to measurement can almost never be traveled backward. He also believed that scientists generally have a theory in mind before experiments are even performed. Experiments are needed to make experienced observations based on evidence. This implies that the nature of the theory itself dictates how the theory is tested. Kuhn further argued, once it has been adopted by a profession, no theory is recognized to be testable by any quantitative tests that it has not already passed. Philosophy of science, philosophy of science looks at the logic behind science, and the ethics that separates science from non-science. From at least one scientist there are basic philosophic assumptions that form the base of the scientific method. Reality is objective and consistent, and humans have the ability to perceive reality. Also, elements of the world have rational explanations. These assumptions from a discipline of a methods, principles, and rules of natural patterns, speech, techniques, theories, and depictions, form the basis on which science can be grounded. Theories that criticize this assumption, and have given their own account of the logic of science are, philosophical systems based on positive facts and phenomena, exclude speculation, and their philosophies believe knowledge derives from sense and experiences. Those who show or prove that theories are false, Thomas Kuhn wrote in his book The The Structure of Scientific Revolution, that when he researched the history of science, he found that what is being used now was dramatically different than what was then the adopted method. His observations do not say how science is or should be practiced, it is merely sociologically important. Paul Feyerabend similarly researched the history of science, causing him to deny that science is a system of methods, principles, and rules that regulate art. He argued in his book or Against Method that scientific progress is not due to applying any particular process. For any specific norm or method of science in history, you can find where violating it has contributed to the progress of science. Jokingly he added, if believers in scientific method wish to express a single universally valid rule it should be that anything goes. Criticisms such as these have led to a radical approach in the sociology of science, which also led to a strong program. The postmodernists of science themselves have also been subject to intense controversy as well. This conflicting debate between postmodernist and realist, which is over values and assumptions is known as the science wars. The postmodernists claim that scientific knowledge is nothing more than formal discussion, and the equivalence of a sermon. Realists claim that scientific knowledge does reveal real and fundamental truths about reality. A lot of information has been written about this subject, taking on the challenge of postmodernist observations while defending science as a legitimate method of finding the truth. This is brought to you by The Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Inker. Breaker. Google Podcasts. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. Check out our Discord server too. All the links are in the description below. Thanks for stopping by. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.